So over the last few weeks, I've begun a complete rewatch of Doctor Who start to finish. And for that, I'll be doing an overview to each Doctor's era. I'll be talking about the stories, the characters, and anything else I, I deem relevant. So today, we're going back to when it all began in 1963 with the first Doctor, William Hartnell. So our story begins November 23rd, 1963 with An Unearthly Child. The first part is one of the greatest pieces of TV history, and it perfectly introduces the audience into everything. I really cannot fault part one. We meet Ian, Barbara and Susan and then the Doctor. At first he comes off as a very unlikable and grumpy old man and the, and the TARDIS introduction is still incredible and makes me giddy. The rest of the story is rather average if you ask me. The caveman, the caveman stuff doesn't really particularly interest me but it's still an entertaining story nonetheless and serves its purpose to introduce us to this world. The Daleks takes us to our first alien world of Scaro where we also meet the iconic villains the Daleks. This is a great story. And every scene with the Daleks I personally love and would have loved to see more of. The rest of the story is still enjoyable, albeit it's a little bit long in areas. But this is a stellar story and incredibly important to the show, as without it, I don't think the show would be the same. The Edge of Destruction is a short two-parter which gives us great character moments. Hartnell shines this one especially. But I feel there is something missing from this episode. Also, the twist of the fast return switch I'm not the biggest fan of. But still, an enjoyable, comfy story that you can watch quickly. We then delve into our first pure historical in Marco Polo. A great story that's sadly been lost to time. Problematic elements aside, this is a great story. I love the characters, the costumes, the sets and the interactions. It's a very beautiful story. It may be a bit too long for some, but that's probably just because of the recon. I hope this episode receives some animation treatment soon, because I feel like this is a story that really does deserve more recognition. The Keys of Marinus is a lot of fun and gives all our characters time to shine. Ian is definitely the standout here, a leader for most of this story. Hartnell has some great moments towards the end of this story as well. And the twists, I thought, were quite good. Just a, just a great episode that is a great feeling. Great story. The Aztecs is one of the all-time greats. I think it's the best pure historical of Doctor Who's run. Barbara gets her time to shine, and the Doctor teaching about the risks and potential consequences of changing time, and which also shows the danger of time travel, and the moral dilemma our team has. It's a brilliant story, and definitely, definitely one of my favourites of all time. Now, the Sense of Rights is a weird story. I like the Sense of Rights in concept, but the story just doesn't click with me. The first half I thought started pretty decently. The rest is just fairly average. For sure the weakest of season one. But not one I'd revisit often. But not one of the worst episodes I've ever seen. The Reign of Terror takes us to the French Revolution, which is a great setting if you ask me. And as usual, the set and costume design is top notch. The history has been proven rather inaccurate over time, but the politics I think has aged quite well. Our main cast is pretty good as well. But unfortunately, the animation is rather lacklustre due to the lost parts, and it's just not the best, and makes it quite hard to watch it sometimes. I hope this gets revisited sometimes, as it can be quite jarring to watch. So that brings us to the end of season one. The characters have really grown with each other, and you can tell they've developed, especially the Doctor, Ian and Barbara, I feel like are the standouts. They've grown a lot closer and embracing with each other, and becoming sort of this family. I love this. It feels magical. The first season of Doctor Who is really, really great, and I'd highly recommend you to go watch it. You won't be disappointed. It's worth anyone's time. So let's get into our season one episode ranking. At the top will be the Aztecs, then the Keys of Marinus, then the Daleks, then Marco Polo, the Reign of Terror, an Unearthly Child, the Edge of Destruction, and then the Sense Rights. So let's get into season two. We get the same team, and we kick it off with Planet of Giants. And on popular opinion time, I don't think this is that good of an episode. I don't get the hype for it. It's a very dull episode and I feel like the messages were decently executed, but I just don't think it clicks for me. It just kind of falls flat. It's not a bad episode, but it's just not the best. We then move to the Dalek invasion of the Earth and the Daleks are back. They have invaded Earth and this story certainly is big with the Daleks all over London. This setting of a post-apocalyptic Earth I loved and I was captivated by. I just find the story to be let down by weird pacing and forgettable side characters towards the end. But we get our first companion departure where Susan is left behind. In fact, the emotional speech from the first Doctor which has become so iconic. Overall, Susan wasn't anything special. Often not used correctly and the rights forgetting she is super intelligent Time Lord that has lived for 100 years. But it's not bad. Just not great companion. Don't tend to miss her. The Rescue is a short, sweet story, but I really love. We meet Vicky in this. 
and it has some of the most wholesome moments of the first Doctor and he really gets to show his loving and caring and wise side. These are some of my favourite moments of the first Doctor and the twists are, I think are quite good actually. So Vicky joins and we travel to Rome in the Romans. Another pretty fun historical. What really makes this episode great is how much of a blast the cast are having, especially with Hartnell. This is probably the most fun historical. It really is a joy to watch, with fun elements distinguishing itself from other historicals, with great humour in there. Okay, now we have our first proper bad episode now. The Web Planet. The first episode I actually struggle to get through. First of all, a script for sure is bad. I cannot see what they were going for in this story. And all of the noises that the Zabi make just give me a headache. And I have to stop watching it because I get so annoyed at it. Why was this story made? For Crusade, it's certainly an improvement over the web planet. But it really doesn't reach the highs of previous historical-based episodes. Some great moments in there between the Doctor and Vicky, which I adore. But other than that, it's nothing really noteworthy or memorable. Now, Space Museum gives us some creative ideas in this start. And it has really good potential. But I just feel it falls flat and becomes dull after part one, which was rather great. I just feel like the revolution stuff was pretty poorly handled and the pacing is absolutely horrible after part one. We move on to the chase and this is a very fun story that is lighthearted and honestly you can't have a bad time watching this story. A chase in time against the Daleks, a clone doctor and many places in space and time. It's silly, it's stupid, but I love it. We also say goodbye to Ian and Barbara in a very, very emotional goodbye. And the Doctor gets really, really upset. And it's honestly heartbreaking to watch to see the Doctor this way after what he was like in the start. But Ian and Barbara make it back to London 1965 and return home, leaving the Doctor and Vicky alone. Ian and Barbara are some of the best companions in the whole show. The journey out of curiosity behind the Doctor and Susan to embracing the Doctor as almost family on their adventures is an incredible arc. And it's always sad to see them go. So Stephen from the end of the chase joins the Tithers for the finale, the Time Meddler. Now I love this story. I love the Meddling Monk. I think he is an amazing villain for the Doctor. Another Time Lord interfering with history. Setting works perfectly for a villain like him. The scenes between the Doctor and the Monk I find just a joy to watch. It's so great. It ends season two on a very, very high. So overall, season two is not as consistent as season one, but certainly a season worth your time. The web planet is really the only bad, bad dud. And the inconsistencies you can look past. There are still some brilliant gems in there and it's certainly worth your time. As for my ranking for season two, at the top will be the Time Meddler, then the Romans, the Rescue, the Chase, Dalek Invasion of Earth, the Crusade, the Space Museum, Planet of Giants and the web planet at the bottom. So let's get into season three. Season three picks up with the Doctor, Vicky and Steven with Galaxy 4. And it's not the best start. Some of the ideas and messages it gives, I think, were pretty good. But it's another case of annoying sounds from the robots this time, giving me a headache. I feel like this story could, be could benefit from visuals and animation, but we'll have to see. It's not the greatest start. Mission to the Unknown is arguably the most unique episode in the show's history, as it does not feature the main cast. This was done by outgoing producer Verity Lambert, who had been with the show since the beginning, to give the main cast an extra week's holiday. So this story has made a sort of a prequel to the eventual Daleks master plan. And honestly, it's amazing and serves its perfect really well. Huge credit to the team behind the recreation. This has also marked the end of the Verity Lambert era and what a great way to end it. The Mythmakers have the team arrive in ancient Greece, which I think is a great setting for a historical. But honestly, it just falls flat and feels rather dull. And I find a plot quite hard to follow. It may be the recon, but I find myself having a hard time with this story. This also marked Vicky's exit, which is awfully handled. Just feels like a copy and paste of Susan exit, but in ancient Greece. But despite that, I still love Vicky. She's an amazing companion. She's what Susan should have been, and more. For one, the writers didn't forget about her intelligence, and her interactions with the First Doctor especially were brilliant. I feel she peaked with Ian and Barbara more than Stephen, but she was still great throughout. I really miss her when she leaves. We then move into the 12-part epic, The Daleks Master Plan. Now this episode certainly justifies its near five-hour runtime. Everything works so well. There is a lot of death. The Daleks are great and the cast are great. Katarina, who we picked up in the previous story, is just sort of there for her time. But I can't deny her death was quite dark, being sucked out of an airlock into space. 
We also meet Sarah Kingdom, whose arc I just love. I wish she had more time with her, as she is great for what she has. And her death is honestly heartbreaking. And it's such a, another dark death that really got me emotional. This story it really is incredible. And my only problem really is part 7, The Feast of Stephen, which feels out of place. But at the same time, it kind of has an excuse for it being a Christmas episode. So I think it had to be sort of fun episode, and take, but it takes it out of tone of the rest of the story. Also having the meddling monk return makes me very happy. I loved his presence and influence on the story. The Massacre is another great historical, with Doctor and Stephen only this time, and has some of the greatest character moments I think of this era. This is certainly Stephen's standout story, and the final part and the ending has some of the most emotional moments between a Doctor and a companion, with Stephen just walking out, and then the first Doctor reflecting on losing his companions and realising how much he, he appreciates and misses them. It's a real tearjerker, but then Stephen has to come back, but with also Dodo arrives. We move on to the arc. This is the start of the decline in the heart and wheel, if you ask me, as it's just a painfully average. Dodo causes space COVID and the anti-slavery message in the second half of the story. I feel like it wasn't handled the best. I get what the writers were going for. I just feel like it was just poorly executed. The Toymaker is a very creative episode, I must admit. But the lack of visuals and the blatant, obvious and really bad racism really brings this story down. The missing parts really doesn't help as it finds the plot hard to follow and honestly quite boring to watch. If this was animated and the racism removed, I'd probably appreciate this more. Also, Dodo is very stupid in this story. Sorry, not sorry. The Gunfighters is a very painfully average story that gets on my nerves with the constant songs getting repetitive and after part two, I have a headache and struggle to follow the plot and finish this episode. The American accents are terrible, the main cast are decent, I will admit, but the guest casts are very forgettable. Maybe because I just don't like Wild West based stories, but sorry, I just can't enjoy this one. The Savages certainly has some good ideas going for it, and I think it starts off pretty good, but I struggle to keep going. You can tell the, the main team of starting to run out of steam here. Steven's exit I thought was handled pretty poorly as well. Overall, this story isn't the worst story of season 3, but it's certainly not up there with the gems. Not bad, not great. Steven's character overall is a mixed bag. He ranges from being just there to really, really good. I just wish he kept more to do, and more great moments like we had in the massacre. The performance really makes his character though. I love the interactions between him and the first Doctor especially, like with all companions to be fair. But I feel like he's some of the best. I do miss him somewhat, but not one I miss the most. We conclude season 3 with The War Machines, which is a great story and I feel it's a breath of fresh air considering the previous stories. Using artificial intelligence as a villain all the way back in the 60s, which I think is just genius. We also introduced Ben and Polly in this story, who are quite good here, in this, but the story itself does start slowing down over time. Oh, and Dodo has left. Good riddance. She was nothing but a hindrance, if not just annoying. Bottom tier companion. I hate Dodo, not sorry. Overall, season 3 is still a decent season, but it's definitely clear that they are running out of steam, as the quality does seem to decline in the stories with this season. I feel like this is saved by its standouts, namely the Daleks Master Plan and The Massacre. But it's still good, worth your time. And now for the ranking of season 3, it would be at the top, Daleks Master Plan, Mission to the Unknown, The Massacre, The War Machines, Galaxy 4, the Savages, The Myth Makers, The Gunfighters, The Toy Maker, and then The Ark. We move into season 4 with The Smugglers, and again, not really a good start. It's painfully average, and I struggle to think what's decent. Part 1 starts off okay, Ben and Polly are alright, but other than that, it's just not an average historical, which is a shame considering it's the last Hartnell historical. But we then have The Tenth Planet. The Tenth Planet is incredible. We are introduced to the Cybermen who are an instant hit. Their appearance and voices are arguably the most creepy in their entire history. And honestly, the 60s Cybermen are my favourite villains. The atmosphere is brilliant, the side cast are great. Despite having to work around Hartnell's failing health, they still managed to deliver a great finale to the first Doctor. I only wish we got more time with the Doctor and the Cybermen, as they were for sure the best parts of the story. Other than that, I have no complaints to the 10th Planet. 
The ending is emotional and I feel that it's actually Hartnell is talking to us and saying goodbye and it gets me really emotional and teary-eyed. The Doctor heads back to begin his regeneration into the second Doctor who takes over the rest of season four. Now Hartnell had to leave season four due to his failing health. Patrick Troughton took over and finished the rest of season four which we will be covering in a later video. Overall, I feel the first Doctor's era is an underrated gem. It started it all, and without it, we wouldn't have what we love today. And this rewatch has certainly given me a greater appreciation for the earliest days of the show. Hartnell clearly loved Doctor Who immensely, as it took everything in him to do it, as he didn't get many more acting roles after he left. And his spirit shines into his performance. The first Doctor's arc is brilliant. At the start, he was an uncaring, unlikable, and not a hero. His journey into a hero, caring, compassionate and wholesome person is probably one of the best arcs that the Doctor ever had. I have nothing but praise for the first Doctor. I love him and always will. So to round off this overview, I thought I'd give you my top five first Doctor stories. At the top, I'm doing a joint top with the Aztecs and the Tenth Planet taking the top, then the Daleks Master Plan, then the Keys of Marinus, and then the Time Meddler. All fantastic, brilliant stories which I love greatly. Be sure to stick come around for the next overview with the second Doctor's era. And I'd like to thank you for watching this overview. This will become a regular series for every other Doctor. And I hope you enjoy this series as well as this video. Be sure to interact with this video as it helps a lot. And please, please subscribe as it helps me immensely. Thank you again. Goodbye.